Welcome back! Today we're building on the last couple of videos and continuing on our archaeological quest. We've got how site is formed, we've got the different types of preservation, and so now all we need to figure out is how to find everything. To do this, there's a bunch of methods that archaeologists use to get an idea of where a past settlement might be. Number one! Primary documents. A primary document is any sort of text or recorded information that was written at the time of the event. So books, tablets, old maps. I love old maps. Makes me feel like a pirate on a treasure hunt. There's usually a bunch of geographical information included with the primary documents and so if you know enough about how they viewed the world back then you can pretty much get a good idea of where major events happened or specific locations of cities. Number two! getting to know the locals. Normally, digs happen with teams from all over the world. I doubt you'll ever really work in a place that you can bike to from your mother's basement. Um, and if you do, you should probably move out of your mother's basement. The best thing to do when looking at sites in a foreign place, go ask the farm boy down the road. Interact with the locals living there. If it's an area that's seen centuries of human activity, they're bound to know a few places where you can find something. Tons of sites are found by locals going about their daily business all the time. Archaeology is not an introverted profession. Get friendly and you won't be disappointed. Number three. Surveys. This is a fun one. Surveys are essentially long walks you take with your friends, but you keep your eyes on the ground the whole time. It's essentially no different how you hang with your friends now. Just replace your phone with the ground and you have the perfect survey team. As you walk along in a systematic fashion, you'll take notes of finds along the way. Areas with a higher density of finds are better targets for excavation in comparison to those with a fewer density of finds. Obviously, this only really works well if you have an area without a lot of vegetation. If you've got a lot of shrubs, small test pits are usually dug to see if there's anything there. Sampling really helps on all sorts of landscapes because archaeologists usually don't have the time or the funds to excavate the whole of the site. How they decide where to dig can vary. Sometimes there's a system put in place, but other times it's just simply random, and usually a computer does the random generation for us. Number four! Space! Isn't it crazy that sometimes all you need is a new perspective? Aerial photography, satellite photos, Google Earth, technology has literally given us unlimited access to the Earth's surface. We'd be like that guy from the Lion movie and spend hours just looking quadrant by quadrant to see what we can find. Aerial photography is also super important for monitoring sites and changes over time. Random dips or hills on land might not mean anything to us while we stand next to them, but a pattern or ring might form when looked at from above, indicating that something might just be under our noses. We can even look for ancient roads and connections. Whole teams of people are dedicated to using these types of satellite images to look for ancient clues. Don't forget drones. Drones are now super big too. It's the easiest way for someone to actually get up there without hiring a plane. It's making it a lot easier for us to take aerial photography and to monitor our own site in real time. Number five. Science. Thought you could get away without learning about science, eh? Wrong. I cried when I found this out, honestly. This girl almost didn't graduate university because of a stupid chemistry course in her senior year. Big ups to Jordan for being the best chemistry tutor out there. Geophysics. We're studying things that come out of the earth, so it only makes sense that some earth sciences would cross over into our field. Now, archeologists use mostly two main types of geophysical technology. Ground penetrating radar, or a GPR, does exactly what its name says. It takes radar and penetrates the ground with it. It's just sciencey enough to detect features and differences in soil composition. The other cool sciencey thing that we use is a method called magnetometry. Using a magnetometer, someone clearly was not creative when they came up with that name. Along the surface, we can collect data and produce images of what the ground is like up to two meters below the surface. Human activity changes the magnetic reading of the soil. Don't ask me how, that's very sciencey. But this can happen from digging, planting, burning, you name it. Number six. GIS mapping. GIS stands for Geographical Information Systems. It's this super complicated technology, for me anyways, but it's amazingly useful for archaeologists. What you essentially do is you take data from research surveys and anything else and you plug it into the system. You essentially make a database of all the information you know on a map. From there, statistical analysis can be carried out and you can get a pretty good layout of possible areas to dig next. That's as simply as I can put it. I don't really understand it all myself, but it's super cool and really fun to play with. This is just an overview about how archaeologists can go about finding sites. There's a lot more in-depth information out there that would make this video a lot longer than your normal attention span. As always, I've included a short write-up on my website, as well as a bunch of extra resource links if you want to get really into the nitty-gritty of it. I've even included a textbook recommendation that I used in my undergrad, and it's pretty awesome. Links to all this and more are in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now go find yourself a site. Stay dirty, my friends.